and uh, we were talking a moment ago about how that, uh, that he was here even during the time they were practicing. That's how you know it's going to be a good day. We are so glad to see you this morning. We're thankful that uh, you've come out again to the Lord's house. Pre- appreciate you so much for coming uh, and just being a part of our worship service today. We want to welcome you if you're visiting with us, maybe very for the very first time. Be sure that you get a welcome packet uh, in the foyer at the welcome desk there, and uh, you just make yourself at home this morning. We just uh, we're just here to exalt the name of Jesus. We're not here to brag on Liberty Baptist Church. We're not here to lift up the name of a preacher or a deacon or a trustee or any group in the church, but we're here, it's all about Jesus today, just to magnify him, to make him known, uh, and to lift up his name, and so we're going to do that. You've done that this morning. I appreciate you worshiping from your heart uh, and just uh, acknowledging the Lord in all of your ways. Let's pray this morning before we do anything else. Our Father in heaven, we, we do love you today, and God, we... We thank you that you look upon us with such mercy and grace. Father, we thank you for being God in our life. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We feel so real here this morning. And thank you, Lord, for each and every uh, one of our brothers and sisters that have gathered here today to worship you. And I thank you, Lord, that from their hearts they have done that. And Lord, we thank you that you give us your spirit. And Father, we thank you that you give us your word. Father, we want to pray that, God, you'll use these things today to transform our lives. And, God, not simply to make us a better version of ourselves, Lord, but to make us who you want us to be, Father, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Father, we pray that you'll keep us safe during this time of COVID, that, God, you'll surround us with holy angels, protect us physically. I pray you'll strengthen your people, give them health, well-being. And, God, we pray for our nation. And Lord, our heart really is so heavy for our nation that we don't even know what to ask, Lord, other than your will be done. And Father, that you would just use us as a church to be a light in this community during such a dark age and a dark time in which we live. Lord, we thank you. I thank you for letting us live where we do right here. Father, no greater place could we live than where we do because, God, we still, we still have some freedoms. We are still surrounded by folks with values biblical values, beliefs. And Father, I pray you'll just strengthen us in these days and times in which we live. And now, Lord, I pray for that heart that come looking this morning, that soul that comes searching, that today they'll find it all in Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. So we pray all these things today in his name, that name that's above every name, that name that at one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. If you will, take your Bibles today or your cell phone or iPad, whatever you have, and turn to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7. Over in the Old Testament. Turn to the middle of the Old Testament and hang a left. And you'll find it. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 12. 1 Samuel 3, or 7. My mind is stuck on 3 for some reason because this is where the story begins. 1 Samuel 7, uh, verse 12. 1 Samuel 7, verse 12. When you finish uh, turning, when I hear the page is not turning anymore, I know that you're there. Now, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, that Wednesday night, we are having church on campus here. So come back out Wednesday night. We'll, we'll be online as we are this morning, and we'll be online then. Uh, but uh, we, were, we are having church on campus on Wednesday evening, so come out and be a part of that. We're jumping into 1 John, or not 1 John, jump it. Somebody pray for me. My brain is not clicking. Now, my coffee shorted out on me, I believe. I should have had a second cup. We're preaching out the gospel of John uh, on Wednesday night, so come be a part of that. Come out and join us, uh, and uh, again, please, when you leave church this morning, go ahead and share uh, uh, this service on Facebook where we went Facebook Live uh, and, uh, you know, because it's helping us spread the word. We're reaching a lot of people that way. And so, and do that on Wednesday nights too. Keep on sharing that, posting that. Uh, we're reaching folks all just all over and we give God the praise and glory for it. Well, we're excited today to be uh, where we're at in Scripture. I will tell you this. I, t- I think I've told it before a long time ago, so I'll tell it again, but uh, I was reminded of a little boy 
uh, who uh, he met his first little girlfriend. And so he wanted to know if he could kiss that girl, and he wanted to please the Lord in everything he did. So he went to his preacher, and he said, Preacher, I, I've met my sweetheart. And uh, he said, uh, I want to kiss her, but he said, I need to know, if, is it okay? Can I, can I do that? And uh, the preacher said, well, son, you just need to go over to the big oak tree in town, and you need to uh, you need to just pray, and uh, you need to just ask God about it. And uh, so he, uh, he made his way to the big oak tree, and got down on his knees, and, and he prayed this prayer. He said, Lord, Lord, up above, may I kiss the one I love. Well, unbeknownst to him, one of his little buddies had already climbed that tree playing around that day, and so from the top of that tree, he answered back and said, Sinner, sinner down below, just pucker up and let her go. So I'm going to pucker up and let her go if that's okay this morning. i tell you what let's do. Let's stand one more time as we just read one verse today. And we stand as custom is just, just to uh, in reverence and honor to God's word. Uh, that's what they did uh, in, uh, in the Bible. We find that example laid forth. And so we're going to stand in reverence the, the reading of God's word as well. 1 Samuel 7 verse 12. The Bible says this. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord uh, helped us. Ebenezer, literally that word means stone of my help. Stone of my help. And so Samuel uh, set this stone down and it became a memorial and called the place Ebenezer uh, because the Lord had been a, a stone of uh, of their help. I want you to think on this thought. I've kind of changed it between our morning service and, and, our, and, and our 8.30 service and a 10 o'clock service. Uh, but uh, think on this thought. Here I raise my Ebenezer, the stone of my help. You may be seated. May God add the blessings uh, to the reading uh, of his word. So let me tell you, I only read one verse for the sake of time, but let me tell you the story here, just briefly what has taken place. Israel has twice, now watch this, Israel has twice came up against the Philistines and twice they have been defeated by the Philistines. Uh, and uh, so the first times, uh, the first couple of times they, uh, they trusted in themselves. Uh, the first couple of battles uh, that they lost, they trusted in uh, God's, uh, they trusted in their past and who they were as the, tr the children of God. Uh, these first two battles where they faced the Philistines and suffered defeat, uh, uh, they trusted in what uh, uh, they trusted in yesterday's provisions. Uh, in other words, uh, and so two times they come against the Philistines uh, and they suffered defeat. Uh, well, this third time, to finish out the story before we back up on that, uh, this third time uh, they realized their failures. Uh, they realized what they had done wrong. Uh, they were simply trusting in their knowledge of the God of Israel. They were simply trusting what they knew about God rather than uh, absolutely trusting Him as their personal God at the moment of the battle. Uh, and so uh, they, they finally, through the prophet Samuel, they got their thinking straight and they realized we can't go to battle just trusting on what we know about God or what we've heard of God or what God did for us yesterday, but we've got to go to battle with Him being our absolute source of strength, our absolute uh, source of guidance and direction. And, and so they come to Samuel and they say, Samuel, we need you to pray for us. Uh, and so Samuel, he begins to pray. And as he prays and he wins, wins the victory on his knees, uh, Israel goes to battle against the Philistines for a third time, and this time they win uh, because uh, God had stepped onto the battlefield with them. They expressed absolute trust and absolute faith um, that God was the only way they would win this battle, that the Lord was their help, and they needed Him on their side. And so God come in, and even though Israel walked onto the battlefield and did the fighting, uh, the Lord stepped in before them, uh, and he caused loud thunders from heaven uh, to shake and rattle that Philistine army. Uh, and so they were so confused, they didn't know what to do, and they staggered around, and as they staggered around, Israel swept in uh, and slaughtered them all, and they won the battle. And even the military has experimented and law enforcement has experimented with uh, devices and equipment that, uh, that uh, 
uh, emits very, very loud sounds to stun uh, and disrupt the enemy. Uh, I was thinking about when Elizabeth and I were hunting one time down in uh, eastern North Carolina. We're turkey hunting. It's turkey season. We're in, a, we're in an old, old cabin, and actually a Civil War age cabin. They got a tin roof, and it was springtime, and it was storming uh, that night, one of those spring storms, and and, uh, and I'd been laying there awake for a while. She was in a room just uh, around the corner from my room. Uh, and, uh, but I'd been awake listening to the storm. The rain was hitting that tin roof so loud you could not even hear yourself think. So uh, I, I was laying there awake listening to it, listening to it thunder, watching the lightning flash uh, through the windows. Uh, and, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, there come a crack of lightning that, that struck something in our backyard, just about... 20 or 30 feet, it was a walnut tree we discovered the next day, a walnut tree about 30 feet outside of Elizabeth's window. And you know what it sounds like when lightning strikes something. Like it is, it is, you know, it's out there. It's like a stick of dynamite went off in your back pocket. And so I knew what it was. It didn't scare me. It didn't really bother me at all. But uh, as soon, uh, actually the, the sound of that crack had not even finished rumbling across the hillside. Uh, and here she comes sliding out of her bedroom right across in front of my door and she said, what was that? And I said, it's nothing. She said, I think the cabin's on fire. And I said, no, it's not on fire. I said, it's rain hitting the roof. The tin roof is raining really hard right now. And I said, that was a lightning strike in the backyard. Lightning hit something just right outside your window. And uh, I said, do you want to come get in the bed with me? And she said, no, I'll be okay. And so she turned around and she took off and went back and got in her bedroom. Well, uh, then just right after she got back in there, here it come again. Just a huge rumble of, of thunder and, just, and lightning hit again somewhere else. Not right there, but very, very close. And the man, the next time she comes sliding by, she had a pillow tucked under her arm and come scooting through. And I said, you getting in? She said, yeah, scoot over. Uh, so those loud noises, boy, they'll, they'll stun you. But that's what God did. See, Samuel prayed, uh, and, uh, and, and in his prayer, he was acknowledging uh, that, look, your people have acknowledged that you're the sole source of strength and help in our time. Uh, and if you will help us, uh, we're going to set up a memorial um, uh, um, commemorating this victory and commemorating the fact that, God, you stepped onto the battlefield, and you delivered us and give us the victory. Uh, and so... Uh, and so that's what happened. And so Samuel then, he raises this, this memorial stone. He raises this Ebenezer, if you will, uh, this stone of help. And forever it would be a memorial to all of Israel um, that, that signified this is the place and the time when God stepped out of heavens and he met us uh, in the field of battle and he was our aid and he was our help. Now watch this. So twice Israel's defeated. Listen, about anybody could take a beating one time. I mean, hey, it is what it is. You get beat down, you get up, and you keep going. But Israel had been defeated not only once, but twice. And, what, and not only twice, here's where the hurt is. But they were defeated by the very same enemy twice. That's a hard one to swallow right there. It's really hard to swallow. And so sitting here this morning... And, and uh, even in my own life, but sitting here this morning, there's somebody here, well, you look back on your yesterdays and there's indeed a time in your life when you, when you suffered loss, when you suffered defeat on the battlefield of life. Uh, but, but when you really look back, you look back to not only a battle that was lost for whatever reason, maybe you trusted in what God's done in the past, uh, maybe you didn't fully rely upon the Lord. Maybe you didn't fully cast yourself on Him during that time. Uh, maybe you didn't declare that He is an absolute need in your life or you will not be delivered from the battle you're in. Whatever the reason, you suffered loss. You suffered defeat. But for some of you, you look back and you can clearly see that it wasn't just one battle that you suffered loss, but there was a series of battles where there's been loss in your life. One thing after another, and then another, and then maybe another. And so I think you're going to find this, is that life is oftentimes indeed that. It, of course, it is a series of battles because when we're saved by grace, we step onto the battlefield of life and start engaging in this world of spiritual warfare that we're surrounded in or surrounded by. And so life is just a battle after a battle after a battle, but 
Sometimes there's loss and sometimes it's a series of defeat and loss in our life. So some of you can look back and you can say, you know, I do remember a time uh, when, when things were hard, when things were difficult. I remember a time when I suffered defeat and I suffered loss. And, and it wasn't just then, but it seemed like then there was something else and then there was something else. There was a series. But what I want you to understand is this, is that battles don't determine the outcome of the war. See, there's many battles throughout the length and life of a warfare or of a war. Uh, and just because there may have been times of defeat or just because there may have been a, a series of defeat, particularly what we're talking about this morning, that doesn't mean that the war is lost. Uh, in fact, if anything, what happens, here's what the U.S. military does. When there have been times of, and I can think of many occasions right off the top in modern time in my mind, Anytime there's been serious defeat and loss in the U.S. military, they immediately sit down with all their top generals and their battlefield commanders and they say, okay, we, we took a lick right here. We took a bloody nose. Now what do we got to do to fix this? What do we got to do to get it right so that it never happens again? And actions are taken to correct that so it never happens again. Many of the things the military does today, uh, they do because of lessons learned after they suffered defeat. And so it is with our lives. We suffer defeat and we suffer loss and we look back on a series of defeat. And when we look on that series of defeat, uh, hopefully uh, we're mature enough and we're wise enough to where we come out of this thing and, and we are able to look back and we're able to say, okay, here's what I did not do. Here's where I suffered loss. And, and what have I got to do different this time going around? That's what Israel did. Uh, they just simply marched out there with a bunch of spiritual cliches. They, they knew the Lord was their God. They knew they were the, children, the, the chosen people. Uh, they knew God had helped them in the past. And, and they walked out there with a lackadaisical attitude. And, and they suffered not only defeat, but a series of loss and defeat. So some of you today, you can look back and you can see times when there's been times of failure in your life where you've lost a battle more than once, a series. And I, I think about a family that kind of adopted me in and certainly they adopted the girls in, but I, 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 I was there when I watched this family who were all out of church. Many of them not even saved. I, I was able to be there and minister as they come back into church and rededicated their lives. And then as many, many, many of them got saved. But the, but the man that was really the catalyst for it all, he had come back, been out of church for some 20 or 30 years. And he was in his 50s and he had got married, found the, uh, found the love of his life and hadn't been married too long. And they went home from church one Sunday night after church, sat down on the front porch eating ice cream together and, and in the middle of eating ice cream, he fell over into her lap dead with a heart attack. And then I think about this family, how they started coming in one by one by one. And, but I think about this family, how they fell in all in love with the Lord and they had battles that they were facing with their children, how that, that the, their children, they were facing uh, fight, battles with alcohol and, and battles with uh, drug addiction and, and battles with uh, a life of crime. And so here's this family trying to live for the Lord and, and all of these battles are coming on them and they struggled and they struggled with that. And then I think about how the, uh, the nephew of the family, he was, uh, we're, we mentioned that back during, uh, mentioned this back during the uh, Tragedy to Triumph series we were going to have before COVID interrupted that, but how the nephew in that family was gunned down on the side of the interstate, murdered as he had a car stopped one night. He was a, a highway patrolman. Uh, and then I think about how the, a stepdad in this same family, he was bush hogging down in Washington, Georgia, and, and uh, and something, he had a pistol on his uh, side, something happened uh, with that pistol. Uh, they think he had tried to get off of that tractor to, to, uh, to get a, a, a large sapling out of his, the bush hog, but uh, the pistol fell out of its holster and it hit a step on that tractor and it, and it shot him uh, through the heart and he died right there and they didn't find him for, for about 12 hours later. They didn't know where he was or, or what had happened. This family, it was a series, uh, uh, just a series of, of what seems to be defeat and loss. Uh, and, and, and listen, any, anybody can take that one lick, that one bloody nose and get up and keep going, but to take it again and again and again. But I want you to understand that, that we're in a warfare here. Uh, we're not in a battle, and that's why Paul talks about this as, as being an endurance race. It's not a sprint, uh, but our life is a marathon. 
and, and it, is to, it is to be lived with a life of endurance. But, but here's what happens, and, and here's why we lose sometimes, I believe. Now watch, listen to me. So there are times in our past when we have had this battle going on in our life. And maybe we too have held to some spiritual cliches. Maybe we even threw out these little spiritual statements. Certainly they're truths, but, but in our time of battle or our time of need, we didn't cast our absolute full faith upon, upon our Ebenezer, upon the God, the stone of our help. And so we come into these tough times and these valleys and these trials and these battles and, and we made little statements like, well, you know, the, Lord, uh, the Lord's with me, I know that. Then it's true, but we just throw it out as a, as a cliche or just a spiritual statement. Or, or we make a statement like, well, you know, he, he said he'll never put more on me than what I can stand. No, it's, it's, it's true, I get it, but, but we, we, we haven't expressed absolute faith and absolute with an absolute acknowledgement that, Lord, I'm in, I'm in this battle. I'm entering in, into this battle. And, and if you don't be the stone of my help, then I won't make it through. And we make these statements like, uh, like uh, well, uh, you know, I'm praying about it. Or, or we tell our friends, please, please pray for me. I'm going through this, this difficult time. And, and it's really superficial or shallow at best, to be quite honest not realizing that, that battle is serious and not realizing that sometimes people do get defeated in battle and they quit and leave and never come back because the battle has so crushed them. And it could have been you. But you got through it. You made it through. And, and you look back and you acknowledge now, yeah, I see the hand of the Lord there. He, he brought me through. And so why if we didn't cast our absolute faith on Him and say, Lord, uh, You are the stone of my help. I'll, I need You for every trial, every valley, for every inch of ground that I walk through in this battle. Why did the Lord bring you through when you didn't come to that absolute acknowledgement of Him? Well, it's because of what Jesus said. He gives a parable about this. Remember, He says, if you have the faith as of, the grain, uh, as of a mustard seed. You, you've seen those sermons preached where the preacher shows up, he's got a mustard seed. He holds it up and people on the front row can't even see it. I mean, you can see my spit shooting across three pews easier than you can see a, a mustard seed. Uh, it's so, so small. And Jesus said this, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. He didn't even say you have to have this big faith, this great faith, this, this faith of theologians and Bible scholars and Bible preachers. No, he just said, if you just have a faith of a mustard seed. And so because during those times, even though you, you didn't cast your absolute on him and you didn't make an absolute acknowledgement that, Lord, I'm facing a trial, I'm facing a valley, I'm facing a burden, and, and if you don't intervene, if you don't do something, then I'm going to sink and die on the battlefield. But you still had just a little faith. You had the faith of, as of a mustard seed. And that mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds if you've ever seen them. They're so, so small. And God out of mercy, God out of mercy because, because that faith was exhibited, He stepped in and brought you through and delivered you. He didn't have to. Really, I, He shouldn't have many times in my life, but He did. Because you never abandoned the faith. You didn't cast yourself in total dependence upon Him, but you still believed you had little faith, just as Peter did after all of his failures and after he suffered one failure after another. And God out of mercy brought you through. And so when we look back, we have these Ebenezer moments in our life. And you need to think right now, Remove yourself from this Sunday morning service for a minute and let your mind go back in time. Many, many years ago for maybe some of you. And, and you need to think about these Ebenezer moments. These times in your life where, uh, where God was the stone of your help. Where you know an Ebenezer moment is this. It is an undeniable time in your life where God divinely intervened and in where you were at and what you were going through. And so look back and start thinking about that because even right now there's somebody here 
and, and you may not even think about it and you may not even really realize it, but start thinking back now and looking back. You know you come through a battle. You know you come through a hard time. Uh, you know you made it through. Uh, but now this morning you need to look back and say, why did I make it through? Uh, who enabled me to make it through? Who brought me through this and realized that it was your Ebenezer, the stone of your help, the Lord himself? That's Ebenezer moments. And so you need, to, you need to look back on some Ebenezer moments in your life and realize there are, there are divine times when God intervened in my life and delivered me on the field of battle. And so what Samuel did then, Samuel says, here's what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to raise up an Ebenezer. I'm going to raise up a, a memorial to this day, the stone of my help. And so here I raise my Ebenezer. And for generations to come, they're going to see this monument. And boy, I'm glad, I'm glad Samuel didn't raise that monument in 2020. They'd have tore it down, wouldn't they? They'd have burned it. Don't get so quiet. I'm not preaching about politics. If, if that offends you, you're voting the wrong way anyway, so just... You know, take a deep breath and change how you vote next time is all I can tell you. Well, Samuel, he, he raised up this memorial. He said, for generations to come, I want people to see this and I want us to remember that when we walked on the battlefield this, this time, when we walked on the battlefield the third time, we walked on with an acknowledgement that, Lord, if you don't do it, it won't be done. If you don't intervene, if you don't move in, if you don't move, then there'll be a third defeat this go around. And I want you to know that these series of defeats and these series of battles that you've lost on, uh, that you've failed on, that you, you suffered loss on, that's not the way this thing's going to end. In fact, I believe that series of defeats come in our life uh, so that we can write it down as lessons learned, uh, that we can change our strategy so that we can change our tactics, uh, so we can look back on maybe youthful moments in our life uh, and say, you know what, Lord, you've taught me there. Uh, and so we can become more Christ-like. So when we enter into the next battle, when we enter into the next storm or the next valley, we go into that thing knowing that it's about to be bad, but Lord, uh, you are the stone of my help. And because of what you've done in my yesterdays, when I had little faith, uh, I'm going to have absolute faith today. So I'm going to raise up an Ebenezer to declare that you are the stone of my help. And so it became a memorial, a memorial for Israel, where that they would come and they would look and they would remember God's past act in history and they could declare Lord this battle that we're about to face because there was more battles ahead many more battles ahead they could look back and say Lord this memorial commemorates the day that you walked on the battlefield with us when we were full of faith and we fully acknowledged that there needed to be an Ebenezer moment you didn't fail us then in our yesterdays. And so God, looking at, that, looking at our Ebenezer, we know that you're not going to fail us tomorrow. As you delivered us with little faith then, now with full of faith, the victory is going to be ours in days ahead. And so for you here this morning, listen to me. Listen to me. We've all had those times of defeat in our life. For most of us, it's been a series of defeats. And we've learned, and we've lived, and we've grown closer to the Lord. We realize now that we have to express absolute dependence on Him, particularly as we wage this warfare in the world we live. But some of you this morning, you need to do this, because before it was little faith, little faith, and God out of mercy brought you through. But this morning, more than ever, somebody here needs to raise up an Ebenezer. And you need to let this Sunday, 2020, 
be the Sunday where you say, Lord, I, I know what tomorrow is about to bring. I know where I'm at today. Some of you are in a battle today, right now. And this needs to be the Sunday where you declare, Lord, I'm raising an Ebenezer. I'm raising a memorial to the stone of my help. And it's you or nothing. You bring the victory or I'll suffer loss. I remember what you did in my yesterdays. And Lord, I know that today that you're going to bring me through. Because with full faith, I acknowledge you. Elizabeth, you come. I was running yesterday about... 4.30, 5 o'clock around the property here, and I come, come around the very back portion of the property back here, and I come across a few small stones, a few small rocks, size of softball maybe. I thought, I think I'm going to grab one of those my last lap around the property, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that to church tomorrow. And, I, and I'm going to let that rock, that'll be our, that'll be our Ebenezer. It'll be representative of the stone of our help. And as I studied and researched Ebenezer, there's a lot of people preached on it and so forth, and a lot of articles written on Ebenezer and all that kind of stuff. But there were pictures to go along with some of the articles, and several of the articles, they had pictures of this little small stack of stones, this little, little creek stones, if you will, almost pebbles. They just stack these little stones up and, and so forth. And then, and then I discovered a picture of a large, large stone that looks like a memorial. It's in Palestine near Mizpah where they think that Samuel raised this stone up. Possible site, they don't know for sure, but boy, is it ever a memorial. It's this giant, giant slab of a stone that stands that looks to be 20 or, or 30 feet high maybe. And there it stands, and again, they just suspect this may be that Ebenezer. And I really started thinking about that, and I thought, you know, that Ebenezer, it, it, it must have been. This is not Bible. I'm just outside the Bible here, but just my thought thinking. That Ebenezer, it, it must have been quite a stone. Well, for one, those pretty little bitty creek stones stacked on top of each other, they're not going to stand the test of time long. I mean, wind's going to knock those over. Rain's going to beat on them, shift them, whatever the case. Whatever Samuel raised, I would suspect that it was a pretty good memorial. And I started thinking, why, why would it not be? Because in that memorial represented was all of their hurt from battles lost. All of the pain that they suffered from the defeat that they endured. All of the grief that they had bore. Maybe all the shame that they had carried from trying to so confidently march into battle without really fully relying on him. And so they had all of this pain and all of this discouragement and all this fear. Listen, the Bible in this chapter 7 says that, that they feared the Philistines. They got beat twice. So fear had overtaken them. And so all of these emotions, all mixed up in one bag, is all cast in that Ebenezer. And this giant memorial was raised to the sky to declare and to say, you're the stone of my help. You are the God of my help. And so this morning, if you're here and, well, you just need the Lord's help, <laughs> I'm glad to report in to you today that our Lord is not going to be voted on in November. There's nobody running against him. There's no party that can take over. He's been on his throne from eternity past, and he's on his throne in eternity future. And, if that, and that tells me that if he's there in eternity past, and he's there in eternity future, that guess where he's at today? He's on his throne today. So if you're here this morning and you, you're facing a battle, you're facing a giant, you're in the middle of it, in the mix of it, and you remember vividly defeat in the past, you don't have to walk out of here in defeat today. But there's a God who is your help. And you can turn to Him. And I just challenge you to, to come to this altar and raise up an Ebenezer today. And some of you, you've got a past and God's delivered you and God's delivered you and God's delivered you. And God's brought you through and you've suffered defeat. There's a series of defeats, but then God has brought you victories. And God even brought you through defeats and restored you. 
And you never raised up an Ebenezer. You never raised up a memorial. You remember the defeat. You remember the loss. You remember the events, the circumstances, the hurt, the pain. But you seldom think about how God brought you here today. And listen to me, some of you have been through so much that had God not brought you here today, you would have died then after the battle. But He lifts you up, sustains you. And it's time you raise up a memorial to Him and say, Lord, there's been some hard times in my life, but you're the God of my help. And so here this morning I raise my Ebenezer to give you the glory. You stand, come if you need to come.